we lost a great man. We lost a man who spent a substantial portion of his life protecting our country and protecting our community. We lost a husband, we lost a father, we lost a leader. Savannah honors a fallen hero, Sergeant Kelvin Ansari. Today, Sergeant Kelvin Ansari will be laid to rest. The Savannah police officer was killed one week ago. Hundreds of people and law enforcement agencies from across the country are expected. WTOC is committed to honoring the military veteran, husband, and father. In just a few minutes, we'll bring you more on Sergeant Ansari's life, the community's support, and how you can pay your respects today. But before we get there, it is going to be hot and sunny today. First alert forecaster Ron Wallace is joining us with more this morning. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning, Amanda. It certainly is expected to be a very warm day across the coastal empire and low country. Today, hundreds of people are expected to say their final goodbyes to a fallen Savannah police sergeant. Sergeant Kelvin Ansari passed away one week ago after he was shot during a robbery investigation in the Starlin District. Sergeant Ansari's funeral is set to begin at 11 this morning at Calvary Baptist Temple. After the funeral, a motorcade will escort the sergeant to his final resting place at Greenwich Cemetery. Road closures are expected throughout Savannah's east side. Zach Logan is joining us live now at Campbell and Sons Funeral Home with a look at today's traffic impacts. Amanda, good morning. Now, before I got here to the funeral home this morning, there was actually a Savannah police officer here keeping watch throughout the night. Uh, then just a little bit later, we saw some of the funeral uh, homes employees here trying to get ready. As you can see behind me, the hearse is already pulled up and is ready to go. You can see that it's got American flags on both sides of it in honor of Sergeant Calvin and sorry. Now, this funeral home has been very busy over the last few days. They hosted two visitations for the fallen sergeant. They're going going to host one more visitation, but this time it will be taking place at the Calvary Baptist Temple, which is where today's funeral service will also take place. The visitation is set to begin at 9 o'clock this morning and end around 10. Now, we expect the hearse to leave the funeral home around 8.30 this morning so they can have enough time to get to Calvary this morning. Again, the visitation will take place from 9 until 10. The funeral begins at 11. It is open to the public and it's expected to last about an hour. Now, after the funeral, a procession will travel from the church to the gravesite. You are invited to set up along the route with flags and signs to show your support for the fallen sergeant, his family, and the Savannah Police Department. Now, the procession will proceed north on Waters Avenue to Victory Drive, east on Victory Drive to Skidaway Road, then turning on to 36th Street to Bonaventure Cemetery. You are encouraged to be in your spot along the route by 11 this morning. That's before police begin to close the roads. The road closures around the funeral home will begin around 8.30 this morning, so if you are driving throughout downtown Savannah, just be aware of these road closures, primarily on the east side of downtown. And Amanda, there are so many moving parts to today's funeral, procession, and the burial, and WTOC will be here to cover all of it. That's exactly right, Zach. Like you said, hundreds will be paying their respects today, and we'll be there to honor him as well. WTOC will have a special live report of the procession to his funeral starting this morning at 8.30. At 11, we'll live stream the funeral service itself. Both will be live on air and online at WTOC.com. We have team coverage to honor Sergeant Ansari's life and sacrifice. Law enforcement from all over the country is in Savannah right now to pay their respects to Sergeant Ansari. Officers from the Boston Police Department, Dallas Police Department, NYPD, and Suffolk County Police Department all attended yesterday's visitation to support their brother in blue. The organization, the Brotherhood for the Fallen, started in Chicago in 2010. Today, Seven chapters around the country commit to being there for the families and departments when they lose one of their own. I'm sure they're heartbroken. I'm sure they're crushed, and I'm, I'm sure they're just extremely sad for his family. You know, just feel bad for uh, the officer and his family, and we're just there to let them know that we support them no matter where they're from. These officers will also be attending the sergeant's funeral this morning. Before today's services, the community took the chance to pay tribute to Sergeant Ansari during two days of visitation. Hundreds attended the public viewings at the Campbell and Sons Funeral Home on Thursday and Friday. Ansari was a United States Army veteran, spending 21 years in the military before serving 10 years with the Savannah Police Department. Those who knew him stopped to say thank you. It's, it's a lot of pain because he really was the good cop and 
when it's sad to see somebody that's gone too soon, especially someone who really cared about his community. Students in Pooler are also remembering Sergeant Ansari with artwork. Fourth and fifth graders, along with some of the younger kids, painted and pieced this together. It's a, obviously a painting of him. The painting's on display at the Pooler Police Department. Officers say it means a lot to have it there. Many serving in Pooler now came from the Savannah Police Department and knew Sergeant Ansari. You know, we're all very close in the community, and it's a very, very tight-knit community of a brother, brotherhood of blue. And so anytime we hear of a death that involves someone of such closeness to a department that we work so intimately with, it's definitely a tragedy. Teachers say creating the piece gave students a chance to do something memorable and honorable for someone who gave his life for his community. We remember Sergeant Kelvin Ansari. Here's what we know about the night that he died. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says around 8 last Saturday night, Sergeant Ansari and Officer Douglas Thomas were called to a robbery on Bull Street near 39th Street. The suspect was inside of a nearby car, and Sergeant Ansari and Officer Thomas unknowingly walked past him as they were investigating. That's when the GBI says the suspect got out and shot them. Agents say the suspect then ran to the backyard of a nearby home. They say he hid in a shed, and when officers found him, he came out with his gun raised. One officer shot and hit the suspect. He later died at the hospital. Sergeant Ansari is survived by his wife and four children. If you'd like to support the sergeant's family, there are several ways you can do so. The 200 Club of the Coastal Empire is collecting donations to help with everything from immediate needs to college funds for his younger children. The organization Tunnel to Towers has donated $100,000 toward paying off Sergeant Ansari's mortgage and is asking you to help them cover the rest. You can also donate directly to the family by mailing a check to the police department at the address on your screen. We also have all of this information on our website, WTOC.com. Pooler police are paying their respects to one of their own sergeants. They posted on Facebook that retired Sergeant Al Askew passed away. The department says he served with Pooler from May 2002 until 2017. They say in the post, quote, he was a gentle soul and always kind to everyone. He will be missed dearly. Two men were shot in West Savannah last night. One of them was hurt badly and taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Garden City Police was the first on the scene, but Savannah Police will lead the investigation. Canine units combed the woods near the train tracks for evidence. We don't have many details right now, but we will update you as we learn more. The city of Hinesville says six more people have been arrested in connection to fires and thefts at two gaming stores. The first crime was an arson at Jungle Jake's Hobbies and Games back in March. A few weeks later, a burglary at the Gamers Only store. Police already arrested and charged Brett Salisbury in connection with the crimes. The captain of the Hinesville Fire Department says all of the suspects know each other and the charges vary for each. Uh, William Rumsey, he was charged with party to a burglary and party to an arson. Uh, his wife, Heather Rumsey, was charged with hindering apprehension of a criminal and false statements. Uh, we have uh, Levi Feltus, who was also charged with hindering and false statements. Um, Karen McDaniel, she was charged with, with false statements and theft by receiving. And then we have Zach Darby and Brandon Goolsby that were charged with the misdemeanor theft by receiving. The investigation is ongoing. The Republican Party is making a strong showing in Savannah this weekend. Georgia's Republican convention happening today, and it's drawing leaders from all over the state. Plus, the sweet sounds of music returning to Savannah's Midtown, the four-piece ensemble, and philharmonic musicians in the Edgemere Sackville neighborhood, and the free Leopold's ice cream that comes with it. We're taking a look outside from the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport Skycam. It's not summer yet, but you would not know it from the temperatures you're going to feel this Saturday. First alert forecaster Rod Wallace has what you, can need, you need to know for your Saturday when we come back.